So, Jeremy, so the question of, I think, the question of the transition of linear television programming to digital consumption, uh, we've been seeing some of that with the so-called TV everywhere in the United States, and, and more of that's happening around the world. What are the barriers for broadcasters and programmers um, to make that move, uh, make that move to a, um, a digital offering, and where do you think that's going, and how is Adobe powering that? Yeah. I, I think when you know when we're around the world talking to broadcasters and operators, other media companies about um, making that transformation, that you know they're all asking for how, how do we build business around digital content and, and taking our linear content and providing that uh, in a digital environment. And you know part of that is ad insertion. Uh, which is what Auditude has historically been focused on. But, but monetization and building business around linear content and moving that to digital is not just about how do we get the ads in there, what's the proper ad load. It's also about how do we provide a proper user experience for our, for our audiences and how do we solve the challenges around device fragmentation. So, so for instance, with user experience, today, you know, when you watch a, a broadcast feed, when you watch your favorite television show, you don't get buffering between content and ads, right? When you, you know, you would never be, think it was appropriate to look at a, a television screen, and when you transition from content to ads, that little circle comes up on the screen. But that's commonplace in digital today. And then the same thing with device fragmentation, you never think about going to the store and buying a television based on which one am I going to be able to get my favorite content on. So you've got to address all of those things, and, and that's really what we're finding media companies are looking for. So Jeremy, let me ask you this. Um, what is happening? Cable companies are threatened. Uh, I mean, I don't know if, if you can say they're threatened. Certainly the producers in the United States don't want to move um, online because of the money they get from satellite and um, and cable operators. When will that transition happen? What what is the dynamic and where might it be going? I mean, I think if I think if you think if you look at the U.S. market specifically, you know, there's always been a very tight relationship between the operator and the content owner, um, largely tied together through affiliate fees. That, that get passed through. And I, and I think over the last several years, there's been a lot of threat from over the top providers saying, you know, are they going to be able to establish relationships with our audiences as opposed to this traditional cable operator and, and content owner um, relationship? What we're finding now is they're getting beyond that, that the traditional relationships that exist between content owner and operator and subscriber are are remaining in place and those operators are focused very aggressively on how do we make sure that we provide that digital content on any device that our audiences may be looking to consume that content. But uh, the so-called promise of TV everywhere, the promise that um, cable offerings are going to be available on digital devices, where does that stand? You know, we, uh, you know, Adobe's taken a, a very specific role in TV Everywhere, um, our Adobe Pass product that enables authentication between uh, content owner and operator is, is the leading authentication product and is installed by all major uh, operators in the U.S. And, and so, you know, what, what we're finding is that, um, Adoption is, is happening more rapidly. You're starting to see those offerings uh, take hold. I think there's been a lot of challenge around how do you make it easier for the consumer to authenticate so they can get that content. You know, most people don't remember their, um, their you know, if, for instance, in the States, we belong to Time Warner Cable, you don't remember your username and password for Time Warner Cable. So we're doing lots of things to make that more easy. So that the you know the infrastructure is there, make it easier for the for the subscriber to participate. Now, for the publishers and for the advertisers, what's the opportunity to <laughs> advertise in linear digital programming, and what are you guys doing around that? Yeah. So, where Adobe is focused on 
uh, on being able to advertise inside of linear content is largely around our Autitude dynamic ad insertion offering. And so uh, the, what we found is one of the big challenges in the marketplace is video consumption is growing very rapidly on connected devices. And what's been a challenge for major media companies has been how do we get that content with ads onto devices. So um, now with, Adobe, with Autitude as part of Adobe, we're integrating our publishing and advertising and analytics capabilities into a single workflow. That's what we call Project Primetime, which many of you have, have seen um, announced. And what Project Primetime allows you to do is to take live or linear or VOD content and be able to dynamically insert ads into that content across any device. And so the challenges around being able to advertise at scale, um, which has been one of the major challenges in, in making this transformation from linear to digital, those, those challenges are, are solved. And, and that's the, the major role that Adobe is taking uh, in this, this transformation. And Jerry, just to follow up, what are the issues about um understanding the effectiveness of advertising in apps and in these connected devices in terms of, you know, analytics and impressions. It's a, it's a new world. Is that sort of there yet? You know, I think we're, I think we're getting there. Um, for instance, we, uh, we release a report a couple times a year, and, you know, one of the things that we focus on is what's the engagement of an ad in the pre-roll position versus the mid-roll position versus post-roll. And the, the, the mid-roll ad is very much like a, is a, is a TV-like experience, which is where we're focused, is how we provide TV-like experiences one to digital, in digital content. Much more effective, 30% more effective um, the mid-roll format is versus a pre-roll, yet the, the pre-roll is the more dominant format that you, that you see today. So you're starting to see better engagement metrics um, being provided in the marketplace. I think the big opportunity for the market is really how does how do content and ads work together, and how do you understand the interaction and the right balance between content and ads so that you can maximize engagement, um, but also make sure you have a proper user experience. And yeah, you know, one last question about ad loads and how that's managed and how you you know how does that work? So. Um, Largely how it works today with, with ad loads, you know, one of the things that we notice from, from linear to digital is that the ad loads on, on linear are, are still much greater than what we see on digital. So media companies are still trying to figure out what is the right balance of ads and content in an online environment. Historically what's happened is in a, in a digital environment you set your ad loads Based on what you what you think the proper experience is, and then you and then you run your you run your ads. Where the opportunity is is that not I don't think all ad loads are created equal, and so it's it's possible that you can start looking at dynamic ad loads based on understanding engagement with ads and understanding in, uh, the user experience, and that is another area that we're focused on, which is how do you provide the right information so you can make on the fly decisions about what's proper ad load, um, whether that is pre-roll or mid-roll, whether it's you know two 30-second ads in a, in a mid-roll slot versus three tens or two 15s. So I think there's still a lot of understanding that needs to happen about what is the proper ad load for digital content. And uh, there's a lot of opportunity to try and make that a more dynamic opportunity versus a, a very static one that happens today. Yeah, how do you manage that on a personalized basis, ad load? Do you get, how, 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 how does that sort of get adjusted on the fly? And what the, what's the data that's sort of considered? Yeah, so um, with, with ad insertion, ad insertion is always informed based on a number of, uh, a number of targeting criteria uh, and also the uh, the ad load that you've set up for a piece of content. And so what, uh, what we typically do at Adobe Altitude is we're integrated into the content management system. So you understand the type of content and use the metadata from the content to understand what is the underlying uh, genre or type of content that you're dealing with, length of content, so on and so forth. We also take um, if the, uh, the media company we're working with is using 
uh, first party data uh, for subscriber information. We can use that in order to customize the experience, the ad experience for, uh, you know, for the, the user. And the, you know, that's largely how we inform what the ad load and what the ad experience should be. I mean, the great opportunity, especially if you look at live content, you've got to make a number of um, immediate concurrent decisions about what ads to show. And uh, the systems that we built are based on being able to make that a customized, personalized experience for each user that's looking at the content. And just, just one more question on ad load. Um, is, so there's no real consensus about ad load on digital premium content. I don't think there's I don't think there's consensus. I think generally speaking, what we're seeing is that ad load online is growing. So in our last our last report, we did we saw five and a half ads per piece of long form professional content. Um, but if you look at that compared to linear, it's it's still less. Um, Part of that reason is most of the executions to date have been around pre-roll. So if mid-roll ads, which are the real TV-like experience, are more effective, more effective, you know, 30% greater engagement in mid-roll, then, then why is it that pre-roll continues to be the, the dominant format? I think a lot of that is education, a lot of that is making sure you have the right technology to create a TV-like experience around that content. And if you have that, then you don't have to put all your ads up front, and you can add for you can increase the ad load across a piece of content. So, my expectation is that we'll continue to see ad loads grow, um, and you know a lot of the messaging that and discussions that we've been having in the marketplace is how do you do that while not upsetting the user experience? And there's an opportunity to increase that balance between content and ads with the, the proper ad load. Um, there's there's still a lot of room for improvement in the industry there. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks for having us. Great. 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 Thank you. Thanks.